how to write the body of the background of the study. If we liken the background of the study to a sitting cat, then the opening paragraphs that we have completed in the previous lesson would just represent the head of the cat. This means we still have to write the body and the conclusion. But how do we write the body of the background of the study? What should be its content? Truly, this is one of the most difficult challenges that fledgling scholars faced. Because they are inexperienced researchers and didn't know what to do next, they just wrote whatever they wished to write. Fortunately, this is relatively easy if they know the technique. And so, one of the best ways to write the body of the background of the study is to attack it from the vantage point of the research gap. Now, if you recall, when we articulated the research gap in the opening paragraphs, we made a bold claim there. That is, there are junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety. Now, you have to remember that a statement remains an assumption until you can provide concrete proofs to it. This is what we call epistemological aspect of research. As we may already know, epistemology is a specific branch of philosophy that deals with the validity of knowledge. And to validate knowledge is to provide concrete proofs to our statements. Hence, the reason why we need to provide proofs to our claim that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety is the obvious fact that if there are none, then we cannot proceed with our study. We have no one to interview with in the first place. In short, we don't have respondents. The body of the background of the study, therefore, should be a presentation and articulation of the proofs to our claim that indeed, there are junior high school students in New Zealand who are experiencing mathematical anxiety. Please note, however, that this idea is true only if you follow the style of writing the background of the study that we introduced in this course. So, how do we do this? Well, one of the best ways to do this is to look for literature on mathematical anxiety among junior high school students in New Zealand and cite them here. However, if there are not enough literature on this topic in New Zealand, then we need to conduct initial interviews with these students or make actual classroom observations and record instances of mathematical anxiety among these students. But it is always a good idea if we combine literature review with interviews and actual observations. Now, assuming you already have the data, then you may now proceed with the writing of the body of your background of the study. For example, you may say, According to records, and based on the researcher's first-hand experience with students in some junior high school students in New Zealand, indeed, there are students who lost interest in mathematics. For one, while checking the daily attendance and monitoring of the students, it was observed that some of them are not always attending classes in mathematics, but are regularly attending the rest of the required subjects. Now, after this sentence, you may insert some literature that will support this position. For example, you may say, As a matter of fact, this phenomenon is also observed in the work of Estonanto. In his study titled, Impact of Math Anxiety on Academic Performance in Pre-Calculus of Senior High School, Estonanto found out that, in Terralia, Students with mathematical anxiety have the tendency to intentionally prioritize other subjects and commit habitual tardiness and absences. Then you may proceed saying, With this initial knowledge in mind, the researcher conducted initial interviews with some of these students. The researcher learned that one student did not regularly attend his math subject because he believed that he is not good in math and no matter how he listens to the topic, he will not learn. Then you may also say, Another student also mentioned 
that she was influenced by her friend's perception that mathematics is hard, hence she avoids the subject. Indeed, these are concrete proofs that there are some junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. As already hinted, disinterest or the loss of interest in mathematics is one of the manifestations of a mathematical anxiety. Now, if we combine what we have just written, then we can have the first two paragraphs of the body of the background of the study. It reads, According to records and based on the researchers' first-hand experience with students in junior high school students in New Zealand, indeed, there are students who lost interest in mathematics. For one, while checking the daily attendance and monitoring of students, it was observed that some of them are not always attending classes in mathematics, but are regularly attending the rest of the required subjects. As a matter of fact, this phenomenon is also observed in the work of Istonanto. In his study titled, Impact of Math Anxiety on Academic Performance in Pre-Calculus of Senior High School, Istonanto found out that, in Terralia, students with mathematical anxiety have the tendency to intentionally prioritize other subjects and commit habitual tardiness and absences. With this initial knowledge in mind, the researcher conducted initial interviews with some of these students. The researcher learned that one student did not regularly attend his math subject because he believed that he is not good in math and, no matter how he listens to the topic, he will not learn. Another student also mentioned that she was influenced by her friend's perception that mathematics is hard, hence she avoids the subject. Indeed, these are concrete proofs that there are some junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. As already hinted, disinterest or the loss of interest in mathematics is one of the manifestations of a mathematical anxiety. And then you need to validate this observation by conducting another round of interview and observation in other schools. So you may continue writing the body of the background of the study with this. To validate the information gathered from the initial interviews and observations, the researcher conducted another round of interviews and observation with other junior high school students in New Zealand. On the one hand, the researcher found out that during mathematics time, some students felt uneasy. In fact, they showed a feeling of being tensed or anxious while working with numbers and mathematical problems. Some were even afraid to sit in front, while some students at the back were secretly playing with their mobile phones. These students also show remarkable apprehension during board works, like trembling hands, nervous laughter, and the like. Then provide some literature that will support your position. You may say, As Finlayson corroborates, emotional symptoms of mathematical anxiety involve feeling of helplessness, lack of confidence, and being nervous for being put on the spot. It must be noted that these occasionally extreme emotional reactions are not triggered by provocative procedures. As a matter of fact, there are no personally sensitive questions or intentional manipulations of stress. The teacher simply asked a very simple question, like identifying the parts of a circle. Certainly, this observation also conforms with the study of Ashcraft when he mentions that Students with mathematical anxiety show a negative attitude towards math and hold self-perceptions about their mathematical abilities. And then you proceed. On the other hand, when the class had their other subjects, the students show a feeling of excitement. They even hurried to sit in front and attentively participating in the class discussion without hesitation and without the feeling of being tensed or anxious. For sure, this is another concrete proof that there are junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. To further prove the point that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety, you may solicit observations from other math teachers. For instance, you may say, 
The researcher further verified if the problem is also happening in other sections and whether other mathematics teachers experienced the same observation that the researcher had. This validation or verification is important in establishing credibility of the claim and ensuring reliability and validity of the assertion. In this regard, the researcher attempted to open up the issue of math anxiety during the departmentalized learning action cell, a group discussion of educators per quarter with the objective of teaching strategies to develop critical thinking of the students. During the session, one teacher corroborates the researcher's observation that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. The teacher pointed out that, truly, there were students who showed no extra effort in mathematics class, in addition to the fact that some students really avoided the subject. In addition, another math teacher expressed her frustrations about these students who have mathematical anxiety. She quipped, How can a teacher develop the critical thinking skills or ability of the students if in the first place these students show avoidance and disinterest in the subject? Now again, if we combine what we have just written, then we can now have the remaining parts of the body of the background of the study. And it reads, To validate the information gathered from the initial interviews and observations, the researcher conducted another round of interview and observation with other junior high school students in New Zealand. On the one hand, the researcher found out that during mathematics time, some students felt uneasy. In fact, they showed a feeling of being tensed or anxious while working with numbers and mathematical problems. Some were even afraid to sit in front, while some students at the back were secretly playing with their mobile phones. These students also show remarkable apprehension during board works, like trembling hands, nervous laughter, and the like. As Finlayson corroborates, emotional symptoms of mathematical anxiety involve feeling of helplessness, lack of confidence, and being nervous for being put on the spot. It must be noted that these occasionally extreme emotional reactions are not triggered by provocative procedures. As a matter of fact, there are no personally sensitive questions or intentional manipulations of stress. The teacher simply asked a very simple question, like identifying the parts of a circle. Certainly, this observation also conforms with the study of Ashcraft, when he mentions that students with mathematical anxiety show a negative attitude towards math and hold self-perceptions about their mathematical abilities. On the other hand, when the class had their other subjects, the students show a feeling of excitement. They even hurried to sit in front and attentively participating in the class discussion without hesitation and without the feeling of being tensed or anxious. For sure, this is another concrete proof that there are junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. The researcher further verified if the problem is also happening in other sections and whether other mathematics teachers experienced the same observation that the researcher had. This validation or verification is important in establishing the credibility of the claim and ensuring reliability and validity of the assertion. In this regard, the researcher attempted to open up the issue of math anxiety during the departmentalized learning action cell, a group discussion of educators per quarter with the objective of teaching strategies to develop critical thinking of the students. During the session, one teacher corroborates the researcher's observation that there are indeed junior high school students in New Zealand who have mathematical anxiety. The researcher pointed out that, truly, there were students who showed no extra effort in mathematics class, in addition to the fact that some students really avoided the subject. In addition, another math teacher expressed her frustrations about these students who have mathematical anxiety. She quipped, How can a teacher develop the critical thinking skills or ability of the students if, in the first place, these students show avoidance and disinterest in the subject. And so that's how we write the body of the background of the study.
Of course, you may add any relevant points which you think might amplify your content. What is important at this point is that you now have a clear idea of how to write the body of the background of the study.